Still talking security, the remaining abducted students of the Federal College of Forestry Mechanization, Afaka Kaduna State, have been released. This is coming after former President Olusegun Obasanjo had cautioned the federal government against paying ransom to kidnappers and bandits, saying it is capable of encouraging criminals in their evil act. It was reported that the release of the students was facilitated by Sheikh Ahmed Gumin Dialogue Committee with the collaboration of former President Goodluck, Pre President Olusegun Obasanjo, I beg your pardon, but hold on. Before we celebrate, gunmen had kidnapped an unknown number of students of Abia State University. The hoodlums took to the students into the forest shortly after they ambushed them while joining on a bus along Okigwe Uturu Road. How can we protect our children in their places of education? So joining us to have this conversation is uh, Oaymen Roy Ohidievi. He is a military veteran. Thank you very much for joining us. And we also have Mr. Joseph Ever. He is a political analyst. Thank you, gentlemen, for being part of this conversation. Uh, thank you. It's all right. All right. The pleasure. Great. I'll start with you, Ambassador Roy, because you're a security person, as usual. Um, I want to understand the, all of the drama that has happened around this um, university students. Let's not forget the Greenfield University students are still in custody. Five have died already. And people are rejoicing. Of course, parents are relieved that their children have returned to them. Now, we, the police and security agencies in this country were always con constantly advised not to pay ransom, especially when... Um, people are being kidnapped. But then, <laughs> um, even President Olusegun Obasanjo, we heard yesterday that he cautioned against paying ransoms because he thinks that this will continue to enable this criminal element. But some parents had come out to say that they had to pay to secure the release of their children. Um, so I'm going to ask you as a security person, the lines are a little bit blurred, and so it makes us really confused as to what the truth is. So what's your take on this whole Kaduna State situation? Well, thank you for this opportunity. You know, um, as a military personnel, I served in Kaduna State for about nine years, and um, I, I saw the peace eroded away into violence. And um, it was it was like a fairy tale to a lot of people. Um, we, we were just um, there was no GSM phone, and then um, once you see somebody running, everybody starts running, and nobody knows what's happening. They bring out their knives and they start cutting people. And um, we're trying to look at why does violence break out, especially in Kaduna. So as time went on, the people separated from the. The Igbos, the Yorubas, everybody separated, the Hausas, the, the Christians, the Muslims, and the, the town became a separated catchment of residential abodes. And if you look at Kaduna State very well, you will see that it's trying to be an example of a radical government structure, where it is a no hold bad, no, no attempt to try the government and all that. Then, in its efforts, to contain radicality, uh, banditry, terrorism, it, made, it makes the mistake, it always makes the mistake of aligning violence and criminality into religious catchment, tribal catchment, or political. So once you begin to have this as a, a, a direction, it, it tends to mislead the security structures. It tends to show a negative body language, misdirecting particular activities that are supposed to mitigate and curb insecurity. So I think that the cardinal government itself, the body language is showing, does not show that it needs any help from anybody. So the governor just comes out and makes um, overriding statements, not remembering statements they have made in time past. Because in former regimes, this same governor has said that people should negotiate for the cheapest girls. And now, in your own tenure, you said you are not negotiating. Immediately, bandits have taken people, kidnappers have taken people. If you take the stand not to negotiate, 
you must be sure that you are putting a machinery to remove those victims alive. Mm. You must put in such machinery so your statement may not come out bluntly to say we are not negotiating. You may be negotiating and buying time to remove the people. So I think that it was not a professional approach and it's going to encourage more of these uh, bandits and terrorist activities. I, I want to understand something before I go to uh, Mr. Joseph. I want to understand something. You're telling me or you're insinuating that the hands of the military or security apparatuses in that, con in that state are tied because there have been colorations of religion and ethnicity from the government, which is impeding you uh, security agents handling the situation as it should be. Is this what you're telling me? Every security agency is a machinery of government. If they are created, they are funded, they are monitored, they are supervised by enabling laws. And one of the active points to initiate intervention by any agency is approval from the executive. So if we are running a federal system, the IG, the chief of army staff, chief of defense staff, they all report to the presidency. So you cannot expect the army, the police, or whoever to begin to take actions. So if they take actions and it is... Um, it's not a legitimate action, then they must be called to order by the existing government because they report to the government. So if you need the military to come into play, if you need the police to come into play, then you must expect that the executive in power must give an order. And once that has not been done, they can't make any move. Hmm. I'm going to come back to you because you, you, you just... You, 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 you're, you're raising more questions in my mind, but let me come to Mr. Joseph. Uh, Mr. Joseph, I want to um, literally pinch your human side. Um, as a parent, like I started, there have been cases where security agents, former president of Baston Jaw, so many people have said, do not pay ransoms to get anybody out from these bandits, because one way or the other, you're financing terrorism, whether you like it or not. But as a parent, um, you know that you can find that money because nobody has that amount of money sitting in their houses. But then the security agencies and the governor has said he's not negotiating. Five of these students from Greenfield have already been killed. What would you do if you are in that situation? Well, um, thank you. If you ask any parents, if you ask any father or mother, what will you do? Yeah, you trust his situation. It's hopelessness. In fact, uh, bitterness. That why, why, why am I from this a country that has has nothing to say? In fact, the things that the people in government even say will provoke you. Why did I belong to a country that, in fact, our founding fathers? as I establish structures that we should be proud of. Any parents, and look, we should also feel that what is, happen to do, what is happening to those children, we are, is happening to us. We, are, we should feel the pain of the parents. Whether we did not have, we are not the biological children of these um, kidnapped uh, students, we should be consigned. We should feel the pain, and that is why the agony of it all is that our political leaders are just talking, and the way they talk, you 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 continue to wonder whether they also have children. But Do the, they have children. But the governor of Kaduna State had clearly stated that even if his son were to be taken or abducted by these bandits, that he would not pay a dime. He would rather pray for the soul of his son. So they do have children. The Kaduna State governor is not a visitor to Nigerians of today. We know him right from the time of Obas and Jyoti today. They are politicians, they are enjoying. They talk anyhow, they talk from the two sides of their mouth. The Kaduna State Governor did not fall from the sky to become Kaduna State Governor. We know him. These people talk carelessly. Now, for example, let me tell you why there is no political will. And that is why the bandits are always celebrating. 
and more people are recruited. Look at the, the kidnapping that took place in Atinga Damawa or Taraba State, where some soldiers were involved, suspects. You are a journalist. Do you see the trial going on? They even, they, the, the, the soldiers were involved in even the killing of policemen who are anti-kidnappers. Uh, uh, there is an anti-kidnapping uh, kidnapping squad within the police force. These guys left Lagos to Adamawa area to go and arrest suspected kidnappers. And soldiers were suspect, were seen arrested, were seen on videos attacking these uh, policemen, government officials to government officials, things that cannot happen in Ghana, things that cannot happen in even Togo here. Do we need security men from Togo to come and direct us? For? That itself is a shame. That soldiers that were involved in this obstructing the policemen doing their work today, we don't see the trial. Is the president of Nigeria really not aware of that incident? That, that there is no trial. That alone has exposed which country want to help us. Some people are saying that we should beg the international community. Well, maybe the last speaker was also talking about the governor need help. If, if they are seeing this in life, that Nigeria security agents will block another security agent from doing work for the society. And nothing, nobody sanctioned those soldiers that did that. For the past one year now, we are not seeing the trial. The chief of army staff, no journalist will ask the chief of army staff, where are your soldiers to face the trial? It can only happen in Nigeria where people have no value for souls, for human beings. Uh, uh, so it's unfortunate that our children are stopping in the hand of bandits. Well, um, mm. let, let me ask another okay. question that I, I want to quickly ask uh, Mr. Evra a question, because there are people who have said that, if we, just like um, Ambassador Roy has said, if the government puts its foot down and declares war on all of this, um, you know, uh, notorious entities, then of course it would show that they mean business. Should we declare a national... Uh, or have a national no ransom law of sorts so that you know the government has something on ground so for example i mean we have one in italy there's you know i, I think my guest yesterday talks about russia once a person's family member is kidnapped the the bank accounts of those people are frozen so monies cannot exchange hands but is there a political will to deal with that i mean we can barely um, get to deal with what we are faced with right now, even at our doorsteps. But can we also galvanize the political will to get this done if we must deal with this issue of banditry and kidnappings and, and terrorism that is, you know, spreading like wildfire across the country, Mr. Ever? Now, to God be the glory, we have a link map between some of these bandits and uh, the students. We have some, in those days, uh, in fairness to the former uh, uh, military president and civilian president of Asinjo, when there was this Boko Haram tension, he went to the, he went to Maduguri area to talk to some of Boko Haram people and all that is, and all that. And even recently, we have another Islamic leader who said that he went and saw the bandit. And, so I think there is a way out. What do they want? What do they want? And how do we put this in process? If the government officials are going to use genuine people who have linked to these people and follow up, what do they want? And how do we start the process? Not using billions of naira, give to their political boys to share the money, shop the money, give to people, and these people will not do the work. If they are genuinely, look at the situation in those days in the Niger Delta. When there was tension in the Niger Delta, there are genuine people who reached out to those who are agreed and to the government. And so there was a peace deal. Okay. And peace returned to the Niger Delta. In this case, this government, present day government, are not ready to use, like to me, as far as I'm concerned, the Gumi, the Sheikh Gumi that I, I see, he, he, he did not also fall from the sky. We know him as a credible person in this country over time before now. Can somebody attach people who are genuine? I remember in those days when Kuba well, 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 assumed office as Nigeria. Well, out of time, I'm sorry, Mr. Ever. 
we're, we're out of time. I'm so yes, sorry. Yes, please, sorry. We have, yes, we have a big problem. Okay. Uh, quickly, uh, in just a sentence, uh, Ambassador Roy, I know that you were waiting to say something, but going forward, what's, what's the way forward, quickly, before we, we wrap up? What is the way forward? Why don't we assemble uh, people who are... Uh, uh, can we have Ambassador Roy just quickly respond, because we're out of time, Mr. Eva. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, Ambassador Roy. Thank you very much. Um, I, I, I see from his pain, you know, it's everybody that feels this, okay? We can't have enough time to express ourselves. But one thing you should know is that um, the government itself collapsed its power status because it wanted to manipulate the spaces. Yes. It wanted to have an upper hand. So the government collapsed the judiciary because of electoral malpractice. And so the judiciary cannot face the criminality that we are. Like the word Dume is talking about, you need to interrogate the case with word Dume before you can know the evidence against the soldiers. Hmm. So we need more policemen. We need more technology. We need more proper body language from the government withdrawing their political will okay. from all of the things that they have been influencing negatively. Okay. We need also the agency personnel to increase their loyalty, even against all the hardcore killings that we are seeing against the agencies. And we need Nigerians to believe in Nigeria and to have the onus to work together to have the resilience to okay. mitigate all the criminal activities We have us. to go. Thank because you. of time, I will close there. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Joseph Ever is a political analyst. Uh, Ambassador Roy Ohidevi is a former military personnel. Thank you very much for being part of this conversation. We appreciate it. Well, we'll take a short break, and when we return, I will give you my take. Stay with us. So here's my take. It's worrisome when we hear about these kidnappings and these threats, even to the city of power. It's beginning to hit too close to home. And of course, it's no longer just um, that faceless or nameless person in the Northeast or in the, in the Middle Belt or some person who died in the Niger Delta. It's becoming more and more real because it's now close to the House of Parliament. It's now close to uh, Asso Rock. And our leaders need to re realize that this is no longer a child's play. Our leaders need to be alive to their responsibilities. How many more of us are going to die? How many more of us are going to the gallows because our leaders have kept quiet for so long? So dear Mr. President, when are you going to address us, we, the people that voted you in, we, the people that deserve to hear from you, we, the people that deserve to see that you really, truly want to keep us safe, when will you speak up? We're waiting, we're watching. How many more of us have to die before you wake up to your responsibility? I am Mariana Cohn, thanking you for watching. Have a good evening.